Hey, it's seven grains of salt. King David, really? I mean, I couldn't believe it when I saw this again. God is my news. Um, will God raise Donald Trump as a King David in our nation? That's what it said, and I had to really go and listen to this. Okay, first of all, if you have never heard this before, this is in the Christian, charismatic, I guess, wing. Lance Wall now called him King Cyrus. That's when he also got a coin in Israel, if you're unaware, you know, in the third temple that they plan on building. He has his face there with also King Cyrus's. So watch my other videos. I'll try and add the links um, below for other videos that I've done on Donald Trump. Um, the Sanhedrin has asked even Trump for permission on certain matters, which is really odd and peculiar. I don't know why. But honestly, let's take a listen. I'll try and cut just a couple clips off of this. And if you want to listen to it in its entirety, um, I'll add the link. But this is just unbelievable. Listen to this. Taiwan. But in these three years, in the unity, uh, in the power and grace by the God, we saw those typhoons change direction. Okay, yes, this could be missed in translation. He's talking about unity, but he says the God, like just one more time. These three years, in the unity, uh, in the power and grace by the God, Okay, sounded odd to me, but let's continue. This is where it gets very interesting. Let's listen. Me a very interesting letter in which you compare Donald Trump to King David. It really got my attention. What did God show you about King David and Donald Trump? Yeah, I think it's just because when I pray for Donald Trump, I always remember uh, there he have the Cyrus destiny. And that's what I hear for years and years. But about this, I think from last year and from this year, I start to hear he will become a King David, which means God really want to, uh, I don't think God will, nobody will be perfect. Yeah, I think lots of people criticize President Trump, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to follow that direction because I know how imperfect I am. But right now, when I hear about God talk about he will be King David, um, I'm really, really, really shocked just because I think he got such a long distance to be a King David. But when I try to receive why he will become a King David, I know just because he will have a greater destiny. He will bring the revival to this world. Think about King David. When Israel started to change the king and to become King David, actually King David bring a great revival, a, a great country, and Israel just become more, more, more better, in uh, much better when uh, David become a king. So I think God had the destiny to let President Trump to impact this world, not only just the United States. But in order to do that, he need to start to change his heart to be like King David. And he may be like to King David to have heart to follow heart deeper, uh, to follow the Lord deeper. He need to uh, love people in a different way. He need to go to face to his inner life. He need to learn how to repent, how to, uh, how to, uh, receive different kind of uh, different kind of character like David had, and if he can start to uh, start to go to this way to become the King David, then God will give him a destiny, not only a Cyrus but a David. David changed the heart of Israel. David changed uh, the country of Israel. And right now, because President, Donald, Donald, President Trump has potential to change this world. And when how he so? Become, oh, sorry, go ahead. How, how so? I mean, that's a pretty big statement to change the world. Of course, every president 
you know, we have a saying in our country that the president is the uh, most powerful person in the world. Of course, that's our American point of view. It shows, that, I guess, a certain ethnocentricity in that we think we're the most important. But so I, I guess my point is that every president is powerful and changes things to some extent. But why do you say that about Donald Trump? Yeah, because for David, when David become the king, he will have signs, wonder, and miracle to change his country, to change the land he go he went to. So we all we all know um, America is one of um, America should be the most powerful country in the world. And if those power can combine with God's miracle and science wonder, not only in the election, but in the diplomacy, in every kind of plan and vision and project that God wants to use President Trump to, uh, I mean, God wants to use President Trump to turn this world in those projects. And if he can have heart of David, then God can use him more and to give him more project to change this world. Okay, I had to stop it there. I might share one last clip, but so he'll bring revival to the USA and to the world. If he follows the Lord deeper, he has a love for people in a different way. If he learns to repent, well, if he hasn't learned to repent, which I know he says he has never repented even to this day, so then God will give him a destiny and that destiny will be King David, his potential to change the world. Who are these people? You know, and I used to be a part of these. I used to be just as blind. And they're, are they looking for a king? We already have a king, and that's King Jesus. And then they're saying that he's going to show signs and wonders and miracles. Trump? Seriously. Honestly, this is a big pile of poop. He can be the king of Burger King. <laughs> and that's about all. That's it. So, but let's listen to one last clip and I'll keep this short. Okay, so now he's asking him how we should pray for Trump. But when we get to the 24 minute mark, I want you to really listen closely and I'm gonna repeat it one last time, but here we go. Sure, I will give give the advice and, and to pray for, uh, to wrap up the podcast. I think we pray if God will give President Trump a uh, destiny of King David, we pray President Trump have a heart of King David. Yeah, because in that four years, God used him as, a, as King Cyrus, but now maybe he will use him as King David. So the quicker he entered into his destiny, the quicker we will see the miracle signs and wonder more in the United States and we'll see him impact this world. And that will also make this election be easy, easier uh, be easier than 40, four years ago. Uh, not 40 years ago, four years ago. So pray for our President Trump and pray him for King David and pray for everything uh, he did right to ask God to help him do even better and pray for him if anything he didn't do right. Pray for re uh Repent him, repent for him. Yeah, repent, repent for everything he did that is not right uh, from God's eye. Then we will see he will grow in the in life, and he will grow in the spirit, and he will enter a destiny of King David. Pray for re, uh, repent him, repent for him. I don't know if you understand, but we cannot repent on the behalf of somebody else. No. No, no, and no. You and only you can repent for your sins, and I can repent for my sins. I cannot pray for God to have him re repent for Trump's sins. This is unbelievable. This is coming from the pastors, and this is Stephen Strang from the Charisma News. I don't know, it's about selling money and selling his books, just like all the other pastors and all the other people. I don't know who David Chang is, if this is even his congregation. I don't know if this is him or not. 
That was not lost in translation, what he just said there. I've done enough research, I will add my links, but please go look under all the things that I have on President Trump. He is not who he says he is. He is playing the Christians, and if you don't understand that, you need to wake up, and you need to wake up now. Because he is being led by the Shabbat. His son-in-law is a member of that, and so is his daughter. I'm not going to go more into that, but I'm going to add one quick link of Geek Boys, and I don't know who this pastor is either, um, but at least he has some knowledge. And we've watched this mystery of iniquity in our time. For at least the last 100 years, billionaire bankers and businessmen have been trying to sell the world on a one-world government. After World War I, they tried to establish the League of Nations, and that failed. And then after World War II, they established the United Nations and have dumped billions of dollars into it trying to build their new world order. And we're almost there. So do I think that the coronavirus is a sign of the end of the world? I don't think so. But I do think this COVID-19 is a drill. It's a simulation. It's a dress rehearsal, if you will, to work out the bugs and get all the nations prepared for this final world government. For the last three months, we've watched our globalist leaders manipulate us with the Marxist revolutionary technique known as the Hegelian dialectic. It's a very complicated philosophical thing, but it can actually be salted down to about three points, and that is called problem, reaction, solution. At least that pastor knew what he was talking about. I recommend listening to the whole thing. He was a little bit sounding like he was pro-Trump, but... Uh, I'm unsure. I, I don't know. But I know there is power in prayer, and that is for sure. And that God will never leave us or forsake us. But if these pastors and these are, they're looking for a king, they're wanting to have a king for Israel, go right ahead because we know who is going to be king over Israel, and it's going to be the Antichrist. I know that God is above all things, and I know that only you can repent for your sins. Yes, I can pray for you, and I do pray for all my fellow YouTubers and all those that are listening, but it's your choice whether you follow Christ or not. So make that decision if you haven't already today, because things are going to get more chaotic, and there's only joy and hope with the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you, and I hope that brought you a little bit of laughter but yet made you open your eyes to who these people are ah, Zionist and I have videos on that too I'll add all the links God bless have a great day all right bye